We're going to concentrate on the next, in this talk, on, on some of the advantages of uh, the new system, E95, for transesophageal echo imaging. And I'm in the structural lab, uh, the director of the uh, uh, interventional echo program. And so uh, a lot of these advantages have, have made a significant, uh, and I think will make a significant, significant dis difference in the cath lab and the OR. So what I'm going to show you are some of the new imaging acquisition and, and display modes, um, including uh, triplane, biplane, tilt, rotate, um, V-plane, single beat, large field of view, color Doppler, and HD Live. And then for the new image navigation, um, we have uh, the ability to do a two-click crop, which really makes cropping of the 3D very intuitive. We also have tools uh, called Flexi Zoom, and we'll ex I'll explain those, and then Flexi Slice. And these are all kind of ways that we have of, of imaging, of navigating around the image, and then uh, we'll end with a little bit of the 3D quantification and modeling. You've already seen this slide, so the new software-based image formation allows you again to see a lot of data about a single uh, point in space um, and evaluate it from a lot of different angles and then uh, generate the image in uh, an extraordinarily fast uh, processing uh, mode, which then allows you then to also manipulate the image in ways that we never thought were possible. Uh, you've seen this slide as well, and again, the continuous focal, fo focus is, is, is of significant advan advantage for, um, for everything that we do. So new imaging acquisition and displays. We'll start with what we, what we have for 3D. We will frequently use a simultaneous multiplane image. And the secondary image uh, can, it, it defaults to being exactly orthogonal, so 90 degrees, but it's very, it's, you can vary it. Um, uh, you know, as you go, so it doesn't have to be exactly orthogonal. But uh, what we have available on the E95 is the triplane mode. So you have not only biplane, but your, and so those are the top two uh, that you see here. Um, and this is with a mitral clip. Um, and so you can simultaneously see the location of your clip in the lateral to medial uh, space, as well as uh, focus on the clip arms in uh, the AP direction. Um, and it allows you then to really precisely position your clips. But um, think about uh, being able to look at uh, the three dimension, uh, three planes, um, as you can see, uh, again, on the bottom two images, uh, since uh, as we start to put the clip on, we really want to assess what's happening uh, to the mitral regurgitation in multiple planes. So again, significant, I think, advantage uh, to allow us, uh, in this instance, to see uh, the orientation, the number of jets, exactly where those jets occur simultaneously in three planes. Uh, the biplane tilt and rotate, obviously we, the orthogonal plane in a, in a simultaneous biplane image uh, typically allows you to rotate it in one direction, and that's across this uh, longitudinal plane. So you can, you can put your uh, second plane anywhere along this longitudinal plane. But the uh, biplane tilt and rotate means that you can actually uh, use the trackball to rotate into a different plane um, and not be held uh, hostage by the uh, longitudinal plane. And so I think in a lot of the interventional space, uh, in this instance for a transeptal, um, it gives you great flexibility. So we need to, from the biplane view, the orthogonal view, needs to give us a sense of how anterior we are. And so not always can you get the uh, short axis of the aortic valve in that orthogonal plane. But here you can see the short axis very well, and you can see that you're only about a centimeter away from the aorta, so a very anterior puncture, which uh, we would attempt to redirect the interventionalists. V-plane allows you, and this is on a transthoracic, obviously, but it is similar for uh, the TEE, um, allows you um, to sit in one plane and then, uh, again, tilt in the orthogonal plane in multiple directions. And so now we can actually see in short axis, um, and again, we're staying in a short axis view, but now we're tilting within that short axis view, either anterior to see the aorta, or you can imagine tilting posterior to see the apex. Um, and so, again, uh, uh, the ability to tilt in all directions, since we have a three-dimensional vo volume, 
into which we want to be able to see any structure in any plane. And so this allows us to very easily see those two dimensions in multiple different uh, aspects of that three-dimensional volume. Now, one of the things we've had to live with um, is the fact that we have relatively low volume rates or frame rates, but the equivalent of the frame rate for the 3D is a volume rate. And the way that we've gotten around that is to take very small volumes and then splice them together. So multiple beats spliced together will allow you to get a very large volume. But those volumes obviously are spliced volumes and therefore not a, a continuous real-time volume. They're, they're composed of multiple small sub-volumes and obviously the major issue with that is going to be the splice artifact. Um, in, when you're in the interventional lab, you frequently obviously have the advantage of the patient being intubated and therefore you can do a breath hold. But when we're in the regular lab and, we're, and we've got a patient under conscious sedation awake, um, uh, there, there are two sources of this motion uh, splice artifact. One is the patient and one is the, uh, the, is the operator. And so even having them hold the breath, whenever they hold their breath, I hold my breath, I mean, it's just uh, can be very, very difficult to get rid of the splice artifact. And you can see again in the still frame of the color, uh, not infrequently to get a volume rate of over 10 to 12 uh, volumes uh, per second, you need to splice together multiple, multiple uh, sub-volumes. And so this, this is a real issue for us because as we go to quantifying, particularly post mitral clip or post any other intervention, we want to be able to planimeter the effective regurgitant orifice area, and um, if this is what the this is the the color suppressed now on this volume, and you can see that um, even though you can you can get a sense of what the anatomy is quite well, you have splice artifacts in here that are not really detectable uh, to the eye, and so when I go to planimeter my orifice, if I happen to get a splice artifact that has overlapped the color Doppler uh, volumes, then I will underestimate the regurgitant orifice area. And if I get into a, a, a region where the two volumes, the two subvolumes, are now separated by that little blank space you see, then I will overestimate that volume. And so these very, very subtle differences um, and subtle splice artifacts are going to significantly alter what we do. And what we've always asked for and what we need is going to be large volume color single beat uh, with high volume rates. And so this is a volume rate of 17 uh, frames per second, uh, just a single beat capture, and you can see the multiple jets uh, with very good time resolution. So important to get the time resolution in there because some of these jets are time variable, temporal, temporally variable. This is uh, another example of a, uh, of a patient uh, status post uh, um, mitral valve, bioprosthetic mitral valve replacement with two with one central jet and two paravalvular jets. And any of you who have done this type of work with TEE and bioprosthetic valve will realize that you almost never, I would say really close to never, can get a, a, a volume like this with a frame rate as high as this um, with a single beat zoom um, uh, image of the entire uh, annular ring. And so this always is an issue for us because you need surrounding anatomy to know exactly where you are and uh, this allows us to get a large volume single beat uh, capture with good resolution of the color. Now what about other display modes? Uh, HD Live is, is just something that's fascinating. It allows you to, because again, you're able to look at a pixel from multiple different uh, views within the volume. You can then change the depth coloring, you can change the shadowing, you can change the reflections, you can change the light source. Um, and so you can pretend that the light source is coming from the left or from the right or from above or from below. Um, and so all of these things will change the way that we actually see the structures within the volume and I think will help us, and you've seen uh, one of these before, uh, will help us uh, to look at catheters differently, um, to uh, look at defects differently, and all of these things I think are going to be of help. This happens to be a light source uh, coming from uh, the upper right-hand 
right-hand corner and looking down at this catheter, but I could just change the light source to be over on the other side and the shadow would fall on the other side. So um, these are just uh, ways of manipulating uh, the, the image using this software beamformer. What about new image navigation? Um, well, we have our, our beautiful uh, guidelines uh, on 3D, and this is just taken from those guidelines by Roberto Lang, looking at the orientation uh, of the valve. And I, 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 I'm remiss in not uh, crediting this slide to Wendy Tsang, so I apologize, but this is from Wendy. Looking at how we acquire um, or attempt to get the three-dimensional volume of the mitral valve. And usually you start with your biplane view that, that I just showed you. Then you use the uh, a user-defined volume and you try and get the whole volume of the of the valve in there. And once you get the whole volume in the valve uh, in the of the valve in there, and then you have to do all of this rotation because we don't acquire. Uh, the images in the surgical view. I mean, our, our probe is behind the heart and it's not in the surgical view. So the acquisition requires a lot of manipulation in order to get uh, us into the, um, into, the, into the correct orientation. Um, now, uh, what, what uh, the solutions that we have on the E95 um, are the two-clip crop, which I think is one of those most intuitive ways of picking a structure and looking and then picking a second point uh, that, that will be the extent of your volume. Um, and then it automatically will give you the 3D volume looking at whatever structure you want to look at. So um, I think it's very intuitive. I think it makes it much easier for, particularly for novice users of three-dimensional echo, uh, to get to the volume very, very quickly. We would, for instance, in the, the case that uh, that we're showing you here, uh, try and take a look at, let's say, a transeptal puncture, um, and get our orientation to uh, the aortic valve, uh, to the uh, uh, mitral valve, or uh, to the left atrial appendage by um, doing this kind of a two-click crop. In addition, you can have other uh, ways of, of uh, helping you understand what you're, what you're imaging. These are the laser lines, so it allows you to see exactly. Um, you can see the, 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 uh, the white line um, as well as the green line, and it gives you on the 3D uh, the exact planes that you're imaging on the 2D. And I think that that, again, uh, in the interventional lab may, may be very, very useful. The flexi zoom is, is uh, again, a, a, wor um, a uh, workflow uh, advantage. Um, it allows you to automatically, and we're going to show you in order, the on-fos left, on-fos right, uh, top uh, down, and then uh, the mitral valve view. But you, if you acquire the image uh, from a long axis view, and this one obviously is the aortic valve has a, has a little papillary fibroblastoma on it, um, then uh, the initial view that you'll see on your 3D uh, uh, is is an on-fos left. You just, with a click of a button, it'll go to the on-fos right, which is going to be your orthogonal view, and it automatically gives you the short axis view. I mean, this is great. So I can stay in a long axis view, not infrequently, for instance, uh, uh, for paravalvular leak uh, closures of the aortic valve, uh, we'll start with the long axis view, but now the interventionalist needs to know where his wire is. Am I in the left coronary cusp, right, or non-coronary cusp? And you just flip it to on-fos right, and you can see the little wires moving around, and uh, you'll be able to tell him right away uh, where he is. And so um, the third click uh, uh, of a button is the top down. And obviously for many, many of our uh, procedures, this happens to again be a transeptal. Um, and it'll go from on fast left, on fast right, um, and you can go to top down. Um, it allows you just to immediately turn, rotate the image to the top. Now, you know, again, it's extraordinarily useful. Um, uh, in this instance, this was uh, one of our post-procedural uh, watchman devices, and, you know, you're, you're never going to have the original view be, be a top-down uh, for a left atrial appendage, but with a click of a button, you automatically have top-down, uh, which means you're imaging from the top and uh, quickly can assess during the middle of the procedure uh, where the leaks are, if, if we have any leaks, um, if the device is positioned well. And so again, a significant workflow advantage. This is top-down for the tricuspid valve, and uh, tricuspid um, has already been shown by B-Joy, beautifully imaged on transthoracic, but also beautifully 
imaged on TEE. And this is what we're now using for all of our tra tra transcatheter tricuspid valve devices is uh, three-dimensional imaging of, of the valve. And so again, uh, top-down, very, very easy, quick as, quick as can be to get yourself oriented and see your catheters. In that particular case, a, uh, a, a, a mitral clip on the tri tricuspid side. Um, now, there's the, the, the final button that you can push is the mitral valve orientation button. And this for a mitral clip is one of those things that's just like, thank you so much. Um, it's, you know, instead of having to now rotate it uh, to the on-fast view and then rotate it again to get yourself in the surgical view, this, uh, the machine, the, the TEE probe should know where, where the aorta is. It should know where the aorta is at all times because it's determined by the angle of rotation of your multiplane probe. And so, gee, I mean, you know, the, we should have had this a while ago, but in any case, here it is. Um, you hit the button and it goes to a surgical view. And so you can imagine how quickly we'll be able to uh, move between a two-dimensional view and a three-dimensional view for our interventionalists. Um, these are all going to be um, uh, time savers, um, probably increase our accuracy a little bit, um, and certainly reduce uh, fluoroscopic time. Flexi Slice is one of my favorites. This now, instead of using your two-dimensional view to get your three-dimensional view, it's your three-dimensional view to get your two-dimensional view. Beautiful. So now you got your three-dimensional view, and I can point to uh, an area on the three-dimensional view, and you get three orthogonal uh, two-dimensional views. This is, so here I am in, uh, in uh, one of the trigones on the upper uh, right. I'm in the uh, medial trigone on the upper left, the uh, lateral trigone in the upper right. Um, I'm straight down the middle on the, in the, in the lower left, and then I'm in the posterior, um, uh, I'm having trouble with the point, my pointer here, but I'm in the uh, posterior <coughs> annulus right here um, on, the, on the lower left. And this is, you can go anywhere along any of the 3D and yet immediately to that point. And where I see the, the benefit is some of our new devices. This is the cardio band. Uh, this is a transcatheter annuloplasty device that is completely uh, driven by, not completely, we, we use fluoro to get the catheters in position, um, but the, the, uh, the anchoring devices, as you can see, have to be screwed into the myocardium. And nothing is done without confirmation by echo. And this is a flexi-slice view of the first anchor, which happens to be the most important anchor, um, of the first anchor of the, flex, of the uh, cardio band being positioned using flexi-slice and looking for uh, the anchor being embedded into the myocardium uh, with the correct angle to miss uh, the circumflex artery. And so again, this type of imaging allows you to use your three-dimensional image to get to the two-dimensional imaging with very high frame rates on all, um, um, on, on all modalities, two- and three-dimensional modalities. Depth mode is just some fun thing. You can actually point to, some, to a place on the three-dimensional image, and it, it immediately understands that you want to image uh, at a slightly deeper depth, and it'll go immediately in, in, uh, to that depth. So again, uh, something that we'll, we'll use for catheters very, very frequently, particularly, let's say, uh, the paravalvular leak closures. So I'm going to close um, uh, with automated, because I want to get to Farouk's data, which I think is fascinating, um, with the automated AVQ. This obviously is an attempt to get to the aortic annulus. But in addition, um, as many of you may have used uh, some of the other uh, uh, vendors' um, uh, modeling tools for the mitral valve, it, this is a very, very bulky, time-consuming um, uh, endeavor. Uh, but uh, the GE solution is to use uh, is to use TomTech, and so this is available on the machine where you uh, set the four point uh, 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 annular points to set the center of the LVOT, set a landmark at the end of the coaptation point, and boom, you've got your 3D model. It's very modifiable, um, but in four steps, so in less than five minutes, you're going to have your mitral valve model and get a lot of information that we are now using extensively for our transcatheter mitral valve replacement uh, uh, pre-procedural imaging. So again, new imaging acquisition and display, new imaging navigation, new 3D quantification, all improving our workflow as well as our accuracy. My guess is it will actually improve the way that we're doing all of our new procedures uh, in the cath lab. And, uh, and uh, with that, I'll close.